DXY is still very much the same, still looking for a big move to the downside. We'll come into a really nice area in the weekly chart. I'm liking how the weekly candle is looking like it's about to close. You've still got the rest of Friday, but I don't think we've got any major news announcements today, so I'm not expecting too much uh, trouble. So if we can keep this up, you can see you come into this descending trend line here, first test, second, third, and now get that fourth, as well as coming back into a major high there on the left as well, which is proven to be a really sturdy level um, as it has been in the past. So this is the area, prime area, where price could put a lower high in and really see a big move to the downside for USD. I was expecting us to see some downside beforehand. We did see a little bit. If I drop to the daily chart, as we can see, the past couple of weeks, we have had a bit of downside, but then we had the US elections and you know, price shot to the moon. But uh, you can see overall, the market is still very stretched. We've been very, very bullish for a while since the start of October, really. The market has been slowly grinding higher. So the market is pretty stretched. And I do think a meaningful move to the downside is definitely on the cards. Um, it's just about staying patient for that move. Of course, uh, as long as we hold into that area, if for some other reason we suddenly get a big breakout, I'll reanalyze things and we'll go from there. But at the moment, we're doing a pretty good job at rejecting that level. So I do think um, I do think uh, USD is going to start to slowly melt to the downside. Dropping to the four-hour chart, you can see price is looking like all that momentum has kind of disappeared, really. Big move to the upside. You expect pullbacks and continuations of such a big move. The fact that price has just given us that big move, stopped on the dime, really, and sold off pretty hard. Is a big sign that okay we are losing that strength and likely to roll over so if we can continue to do that i think there could be some nice pullbacks and shorts probably going into next week but uh, the bigger move for me still looks like it's to the downside um probably not ready to be shorted yet unless you're already in the trade you don't really want to be looking to enter anything now and of course we'll touch on your usd as well um but in my book, I'll be expecting more downside. What I would like to see is if price can continue to fall and then probably find some pullbacks next week for continuation and kind of give us a bit of a head and shoulder pattern. So you've got the left head and the right shoulder over there. Um, and of course, you know, that will roughly be your neckline. And then you expect to see a continuation to the downside. And in terms of where we could push to, we go to the daily chart. I mean, if I just draw Fibonacci from the low to the high. So, okay, let's make sure we can see that. There we go. And low to the high, we've got the 50% around the 102,750, 103 area. So that's kind of where I'm looking for price to come into. It kind of lines up with this level here on the left as well. A nice major swing low, big push to the upside. So that's roughly where I would expect USD to end up at. We could go a lot further. Like I said in the weekly chart, we could see a, a massive swing you know, right back down into the lows and kind of repeat what we've been doing here. Lower high, lower high, lower high. Could be another one. Could be right back at the low. So there's a lot of potential to the downside, but I think just keep it simple. No need to look for such a big swing trade. The move I'm really looking for is pretty nice. Um, so that's the kind of idea I'm looking at um, going into next week for USD. If you want to see that downside kind of continue, and then we can probably look at some pullbacks next week. If we take a look at Euro USD and pretty much looking at the inverse of that, so again, we've had a big move to the downside. The market's still pretty stretched. But again, I'm looking to see if we can respect this low, which uh, we haven't quite come into. We might test it by like a pip. Um, but I'm, I'm still looking to see if price can have a little deeper test. If not, and we keep falling on the USD and we keep rising on, uh, on Euro, then I want to see a lot more upside. Then again, I'll look for those pullbacks for those buys. Uh, or if price does come back down to retest the low, uh, then I'll again look for some entries um, in that area there as well. So it's a more aggressive trade, but again, it, it fits the bias really well. Higher time frames lining up with it pretty well too. So I don't mind it, but if the market does want to keep pushing to the upside today and you know, sometime next week as well, I'll wait for us to push high. Again, kind of forming that head and shoulder pattern or inverse head and shoulder pattern in this situation. Left head, and if you do push up, right shoulder there that being your neckline and then you can expect continuations after that and that's a horrible trend line and you know that will kind of be your your trade there for, for next week or maybe maybe the week after depends how long it takes to develop but uh yeah in terms of the bias looking for upside there for euro if we do push back down to the lows i'll see what we can do 
if the market decides it wants to remain bullish and keep pushing higher, then I will be looking for some pullbacks you know, at some point next week. Just depends how price um, develops. But as I said, this is the low which I'm looking for the bounce from around 1.06700. And let's see if the market comes there again or if we do push away. Uh, in terms of some other USD pairs, so I do like Aussie dollar as well. This one I'm a uh, I'm looking for a lot of upside. Let me get to the FXCM. Um, so yeah, this one I'm looking for a lot of upside as well. Um, again, I do think a big pullback is due back to some areas up here around 0.68. That's kind of where I'm looking for price to get to. It's kind of looking like it's respecting this low, maybe not the most major area in the market, which is why I'm not really looking to trade Aussie dollar. We've still got major support down there, which is kind of my number one place to look to buy Aussie at the moment because if you zoom out, it's kind of like a big range. So effectively, I want to buy as low or sell as high as possible. Um, but it does look like price is holding onto that area. And um, if we can keep that, I do think there's room to the upside, especially looking at the full hour price action. You know, this is kind of a really nice double bottom down here. Price has just gone and broke through some structure uh, yesterday. So now I'm expecting a pullback, a high low somewhere and a continuation to the upside. So it looks to me that Aussie dollar is ready to push down. Really strong move there, breaking structure. You can imagine this is the US elections putting that high, a lot of aggressive momentum to the downside. But all it did was just respect the low and bounce right back up again. So to me, that's a bit like a, an anti-climatic sell-off, really. If the market was really going to continue, we'd have broke through that floor and kept going. The fact that we just respected it with a few wicks, and shot to the upside, you know, equally as uh, as aggressively, tells us to me uh, that we're probably going to push to the upside here now. So again, Aussie dollar pullbacks continuations look good. I think New Zealand dollar is looking very very similar. Um, yeah, to a degree, maybe not as good as Aussie dollar because it looks like we just about broken the high, but Aussie dollar's done it more confidently. Again, looking for a similar thing, a pullback now and a continuation. The market failed to really break through that floor, really heavy sell, but all it mounted to is just price respect in that area and now pushing to the upside. So again, as the USD, I do think we are in the business for a pullback now. You can see how far the market's fallen, how stretched we are. I've been talking about a retest of this low, which I think is looking more and more likely as the days go on. Um, at one point, I thought we were going to keep falling back into the low here, but it does look like the market is finding support in this area. I mean, it's not the most significant price to me, so it's nothing that I'm looking to buy from, but it does look like the market's having a really hard time try, trying to break through 0.595. So to me, I'm expecting some upside and uh, a retest around 0.612. But do drop to the full hour. It could be some nice entries if we were to come back and retest that level again and uh, look for some entries in that area. But... Yeah, not too sure if we'll see a big enough pullback, but it does remain a, a nice area to long from and uh, expect to see more upside. Um, if we take a look at dollar CHF, I'm pretty sure that's come back to a nice area uh, on the full hour. Yes, it has really nice area down the left, respecting it pretty well. Bit of a breakout, but the market's coming back underneath. So again, with dollar CHF, they're all kind of forming similar patterns in terms of their head and shoulders, which is the left over there. If we do come back down, you're expecting that kind of right shoulder to form and looking for some downside. Yeah, that to me is an indication that, again, dollar CHF is at an area where we could sell off from. I'm pretty sure we're lining up with a big level on the weekly chart as well. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, big level on the weekly, just about tapped into it as well. So we do have some reasons for dollar CHF to head down. And of course, if Dick Twy is going to reject that area, there's a good chance we are going to see some downside. Uh, pound USD, I'm looking for a similar move, but I'm not as uh, as big a fan with this pair as with some of the USD pairs. But again, Pound USD has been in this corrective channel for a very, very long time. And again, looking like it's running out of energy. Um, so I do expect to see move to the upside. Of course, we need to break out first. Uh, and do it confidently. And when we do that, then I'll speak about the buys and the pullbacks. Uh, at the moment, we're still in the channel. And for all we know, we could actually see another move back down. Uh, but I'm not really interested in the sales right now for pound USD. I do think the bigger move is likely to the upside. So I'm waiting for the break of that channel. 
and then that will be the catalyst to expect more upside. If we take a look at gold and silver, um, of course, gold and silver, big moves to the downside yesterday, but they did recover some of that. Um, so it's a bit awkward with, with gold. So I was looking to buy on the retest the high here. Looks like price is breaking back above it, but it's not very clean. So I'm not really looking to take any entries there uh, with gold at the moment. I'm still bullish, but I'm waiting for price to kind of develop a little bit more. Um, if anything, I don't actually mind the sells back up here. Uh, I would say short-term sells though, because we did have you know, a brief consolidation and then we dropped really, really hard through that level. So that tells me it's a nice place for a short. I wouldn't look for a big continuation though, because of course gold on the higher time frames is still still very bullish. We haven't, we haven't broken through any major structure. So I wouldn't be looking to short and hold on to anything for too long, but it still does remain a nice place to actually take some intraday sell opportunities and look for a reaction or something. Um, again, it depends how we get there and how we, how we situate, but looking for a reaction from that area, 7, uh, 2730, Looks like a nice place for a short. You know, we may just form a higher low and then continue on, but could still be an opportunity to profit from. And then silver, I actually do like silver again. I was looking for some original buys around 32.5, but we've broken through that level. So now I'm concentrated more on this area around 30.4. So if silver does continue to push down a little bit further, that'd be great. And then from there, I'm looking for a buy. Again, not necessarily looking to take it all the way back to the high. If it does, great. I will be looking to trail stops. But again, I'm at least looking for a reaction, possibly back into this area here, 32.3. That could be a nice trade in itself. Maybe take some profits there, and then we see if we can break through that. But this is kind of what I'm looking at for silver now. And uh, hopefully we can get that set up probably sometime next week, because I highly doubt we'll get there today.